you guys what is going on it is the day after i did the elk cooking video and i decided that i have this dead head that i found this year that i really wanted to work on his antler um i went back up there there was snow on the ground and there were push marks like something got in a real good fight and it pushed him down through uh the valley area and then there's a cliff at the bottom of it and he wound up going down there but he was a good buck so i'm gonna go on ahead and i'm gonna take him today and go to a buddy's taxidermy shop and see if we can't rebuild this guy's antler and show you guys how it's done all right well we just showed up to our buddy's house here we're gonna go try to fix up this deer head get the point retached here's some of our buddy's work The amount of detail is pretty great on all these. There's a cool hair for Roger. <laughs> Caribou's. This is a heck of a coos deer. Good job, Tom. Uh, he does a really good job on these fish and mountain goats. Mm -hmm. That's a big old fluffy goat. My goodness. Hey babe, there's your favorite animal right there. Really? Mountain lion. Mm -hmm. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it's cold in here. Just wait till you go downstairs. So what I showed you, uh -huh. they make white. We use brown mostly around the, everything we fill. When we fill around the eyes, we fill brown. Okay. You know? Yeah. But what I did on these, if I remember right, I mixed, you probably can mix <laughs> regular paint in, you know what I mean? Not, not, because it's water soluble, regular. You wanna mix it, you have neutral. So you start out with neutral, and you know, your, your horns are not that gray shit colored. Right. Mix a little brown in there. I mean, just a little, keep mixing it, and you'll feel, and then when it dries, it changes color. So you gotta okay. touch around with it. But it, it's, you know, you got to do it yourself. It's, right. Uh, well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to know how to do, though, I feel oh, like. Because yeah, yeah. I got, all I do is European mounts on my head. It's like if I get a if I get a mule deer this coming year with my bow in the archery season, I'd, I'd be tickled to death to bring it in and get it worked on. But for, like, anything that's not velvet, I pretty much just do it myself. Yeah, even the velvet, I've been getting them. I've been putting spray velvet on some of them. Oh, yeah. Velvet's hard to make. Look. I believe it. Like, that's big velvet right there. On that white tail? Mm -hmm. It looks oh, all right. I think it does. It doesn't look, it doesn't look fake. Well, like, first of all, you got to ship it there. Then you got to get it shipped back. So right. you're talking probably 80 bucks. And to do it, it's 100, 150 bucks. All right, guys. Our buddy Gary gave us some uh, gave us some tips and tricks on how to set this all up. And if you guys ever need anything, and you're in the Salida, Buena Vista, basically anywhere in Chafee County, Fremont County, and you guys want a really good taxidermist to work on your guys' stuff that'll give you pretty reasonable prices on your mounts, come to Gary. All right, it's called GB Taxidermy. You can look it up online. I'll show you guys what we got here in a minute, but for now we're gonna head on back to the house. We got a little bit of a drive ahead of us. And if you're ever lost, come to Swissville where the giant freaking buffalo is. He'll help you guys out, get you all set up in the taxidermy side of things. He'll do fish, he'll do elk, he'll do bears, moose, caribou. He does African games sometimes, I think. And he'll do he'll do pretty much anything you you guys need. All right, guys, so we just made it back home. My buddy Gary gave us a plastic piece of antler that he casted. And what we're going to do is trim it down just a hair so it looks more natural. Or I could leave it long however I really want to do it. But I'm going to probably trim it down just a hair, probably to about right there. And then what we've done is he drilled a hole for us and put a piece of wire in there 
so that we get a good contact with this. I also have a little ball of some uh, epoxy-like stuff, and it's pretty hard, so I'm gonna add some water to it. And then I'm gonna use some stain to actually stain this and see if I can get the right color stain going on this, um, this plastic piece of antler, and I'm gonna put it right there to rebuild this antler. All right, guys, so what I've done is I have found a drill bit it's gonna match up pretty good with this wire right here. And I'm gonna go on ahead and drill a hole into that piece of antler that was uh, made out of plastic. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna go on ahead and measure this with the actual wire itself. It looks like I need to drill a pretty good size hole here. Alright, so now that we've got our hole drilled, we're going to go on ahead and slap this on here. I'll show you guys what that looks like. And what it's going to look like is, oh, we're pretty close. I'm going to have to use both hands here. She looks like it's pretty close to being down in there. We're going to go on ahead and drill some more out of this hole. That didn't work too great but we'll see what it does here all right so now that it's flush here we're gonna get it to where we want it which is about right there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go get this water down a little bit so that i can play with it a little more okay guys so i set them on the floor and i started applying the magic sculpt to the actual antler of this thing along the base where the real antler is to the the fake piece of the antler all right guys so we actually had to go to the store and get some extra stuff here and what i'm gonna do is i got this plastic wood i'm gonna go on ahead and put some of this on let's see here gotta poke a hole in it or cut off the top or something here there we go it isn't that color as it is it's kind of a Kind of like a grayish brown color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that there to dry so I can test out the hardness of this. And in the meantime of that, I'm gonna go on ahead and pop the seal on this stain that I just got so I can try to match the color of the deer antler that we've had in all this previous part of the video. Shoo, that is some dark stain. Let's see if this will work. I'm gonna get just a little bit of this and test it out. Oh man, that is dark. That is really, really dark, guys. I'm sure that this will work. So that's kind of the color right now. It's really, really dark. So this thing is pretty dark, but it actually looks pretty decent at the same time. So, I mean, just a comparison to the actual horn itself, it's a little off, but I'm gonna go on ahead and spray on some of this stuff over here, which is some matte finish. And what this matte finish is gonna do is it's gonna actually keep that stain in or on this plastic piece of horn. And then what I don't like about it, we're all sandpapered off. Okay, so now I'm gonna let this dry for a little while. It is really dark. So like I said, I'll just let that do its thing. I'll let it dry up for a little bit. I'll just go on ahead and sand this down here in a minute, just so it looks a little more like the actual antler itself, which is actually pretty close in parts. Poor, but they looked kind of interesting to me. I figured it'd be a good addition to our uh, our trophy tree to have some some light shed upon our subject here so that way at night or whenever our friends and family see this they can actually enjoy it just a hair more by having something interesting to actually look at let's go ahead and pop these all out all 
Oh, that's kind of neat. They actually come with these little adhesive strips. I was hoping for that. So I think these are like double-sided adhesive strips that you can place on the back of these. This is what it looks like. You just put it right there. And then they lock and unlock something like that so you can put the batteries in which is a kind of cool feature all right and they click that's good that way you know that they're actually closed and it comes with this little tiny remote so that you can actually turn it on and off turn on all i, I think it's to turn on all and all of these things turn them off turn them on and we got a bunch of batteries here If you're a hunter and you actually like to have your animals, you know, hung up, then this could be something that you would like to do as well. So it looks like these all get three batteries is what my guess is. Let's see if that's right. Oh, geez, Louise, that is bright. Wow, I just like blinded myself. Hey, this, this would make a good... Does it actually make a really good light for uh, shooting videos inside? There's another trick for you guys, I guess. Ooh, got red, green, blue. Well, oh, that's that's all the normal colors, I guess, for these things. So we're gonna go on ahead and put all these batteries in here real quick. So whenever you guys are doing this, I'm on my fourth one right now, but make sure you put in the bottom two first. So there's the bottom one. There's the other bottom one. So there's two that go on the bottom. Then there's one that'll go in the top right here. So go on ahead and put that top one in last. Otherwise, it's going to be popping out if you try to get the other ones in last. The top one will definitely pop out. Just in case you guys are curious. And you guys can actually get these at Walmart. And I think they're like, I don't know, 15, 15 bucks or something. They're not that bad considering the fact that you get five lights and they actually work really really good i mean you could use these as headlamps for your hunting or you know you could you could do a lot with these all right now we've got all of our batteries in all of these now we're going to check out this little guy it's got a little tab you pull out so that you can use it okay all of them but this one are working so we got one two three and four so we got four of them working right now i'll check out what's wrong with this other one here in just a second Ooh, so this remote's pretty neat you've got all sorts of different colors you can choose from it's a nice little feature i like these wow strobe lights for your christmas needs flash which is pretty much the same thing smooth is I guess the red color. Oh, just kidding. It changes it. That's pretty neat. So we're gonna figure out what's wrong with this one real quick. Looks like, yeah, this battery was put in backwards. Of course, it'd be a pain because it's the bottom one. There we go. All right, here we go. This is not quite as easy as I was thinking it was gonna be, but also isn't too hard. I'll probably place this one right here. Just on top of this piece of wood. Okay. Okay, so I just shut off the light to see how this looks real quick. Looks pretty dang neat, really. The red color is pretty neat as well. So I think actually if I could get this one right here put underneath the skull so it looks more like that, that would be just awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and try that out real quick. Okay, so... These things are pretty, pretty neat, really. Um, and you can change one at a time if you want, or you could shut one off. So we're gonna leave this one right here for the use of our videos, which I'll actually leave it on for now because it does look, does make everything look a little better. Now these adhesive strips, we're gonna figure out what to do with these. Um, maybe in a different project, but for right now, we're going to keep them right next to our elk shed on the TV stand. Now, that wood stuff, like I said, it does get kind of hard. 
but it's also a weird it's a weird texture so i might use it here in a minute but for now i'm just gonna set that aside and grab this buck okay now i wound up building this which if i put the light in the right spot you'll actually be able to see it so I put two pieces of metal inside of another piece of, uh, I'm going to say this is probably aluminum just for the sake of actually having it like extended off the tree. Cause I don't, I don't really want to spend 40 bucks right now for the actual head mounts. And it looks like this is drying up pretty nicely and it's, I mean, it's pretty pretty close to the actual color of this horn antler rather you know for all those that are english teachers if there are any that watch this so you guys what i'm gonna do is real quick i'm gonna slide this head back a little bit so it's a little more out of our way here and that actually works for even setting it up on a table because i accidentally broke one of the bones on the back either that or it was already broken when he fell off the cliff i don't know but what we're gonna do is we're gonna touch this up which I'm gonna actually have to set this up a different way, like so, so I can see this a little better. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just kinda giving it a little more detail. Getting off the big clumps of the stain here. I'll wipe some of that off on the top so it looks like it's got a little bit of a what most hunters call the ivory tip finish. And there you have it. I'm gonna blend that out a little better. And it really doesn't take much. All right, there we have it. There's the finished product, guys. Didn't take too long to do either. So here we go. That's what he's gonna look like. I might, I might have to fade that out a little bit more. But it looks pretty dang close. It really does. So that's pretty much a finished product but what i'm gonna do is i've got some of this i've got some of this loctite here which is a super glue and we're gonna pop that out of there just like so and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna glue the actual wire pieces into the fake antler point and the actual antler itself. See so guys, it's much easier to go from a darker colored stain whenever you're redoing, like if you're re rebuilding any antlers, it's easier to start off with a dark stain and go to a lighter, lighter color by just sanding it down with like a little piece of sandpaper. Um, this, is, this is a lot better color versus the antler here. I mean, it's almost unnoticeable. So I'm gonna go on ahead and put this back in its spot. And then I may just leave it, I may just leave it loose so that if, you know, I'm moving it around or anything, it doesn't ever really fall off. Or I might just glue it in there. We'll find out here in a minute. I mean, that, that side's a lot closer to the color. So I might have to sand it down just a hair more, but that's, pretty dang close i mean really you would not really be able to tell from afar i might just leave it like it is all right all there he is that's the finished product i'm just gonna leave it like it is though so that if i do ever need to move it i can just pull that piece out and do with it what i need to now i'm just gonna go on ahead and put him back on here and the coolest little thing about this um this mount that i made for this guy is the fact that i can just slip it over one solid screw and then press with his horns just like so but it's kind of cool because he kind of bobbles a little bit pretty neat so if you guys can't get this adhesive to stick to stuff like wood just do yourself a favor, get yourself an old dip can, 
put a screw in the center of it, screw it up to your wood, get your light, right? Get your light and just slap it on in there, just like so. And it will fit perfectly in there. So now we'll go on ahead and turn that light back on. All right, y'all, so here's the finished product. Looks pretty good in the, at night. It'll look good in the daytime. Now at this point, you'll only be able to really tell that it's not a real point because of the base of this thing, but I will get that fixed momentarily. But for now, that's, that's how we're gonna keep it. All right, guys, if you liked today's video, do us a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe to our channel if you guys like this kind of content and you want to see more. And also hit that notifications button if you guys want to see all of our most current and most recent updates on our videos and what we're doing on our day-to-day -day basis. We will catch y'all on another gosh dang episode.